In this video, we will look at a few examples that will let us practice using the third angle theorem. Now, what the third angle theorem says is if we know that two pairs of angles of a two triangles are congruent, then the third pair of angles must be congruent as well. So let's look at example A. It says determine the measure of the missing angles. And we have some angles marked. One angle is 83, and that's marked as congruent with angle E in triangle FED. So I'm going to mark that as 83 as well. We also have that angle D is 42 degrees, and it's marked as congruent with angle A, which is also therefore 42 degrees. So those angles will be 42 and 83. Now to find the missing angles, we'll know that because two pairs of angles are congruent already between the two triangles, that means that the third angles, C and F, must also be the same. So angle C is congruent to angle F. So let's just figure out what angle C is, and then we'll know both our answer for C and F. So to find angle C, remember that in a triangle, the three angles add to 180 degrees. So if we want to find angle C, we could do 180 minus 42 minus 83 and get our answer, which is 55. So that means angle C is 55 degrees, and angle F will also be 55 degrees due to the third angle theorem. Example B says, the third angle theorem states that if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another triangle, then the third pair of angles must also be congruent. What additional information would you need to know in order to be able to determine that the triangles are congruent? So to know that two triangles are congruent, we need to know information about their angles and about their sides. So knowing only that all three pairs of angles are congruent is not enough. So we would need to know at least some information about their sides. So you need to know that all pairs of sides are congruent as well. So just remember, angles alone is not enough information to know that two triangles are congruent. You also need to know information about sides. Example C, determine the measure of all the angles in the triangle. Okay, so we have that angle B is marked as 153 degrees. Angle ACD right here is 15 degrees. And we also have parallel lines, which means we have alternate interior angles to work with. So the 15 degree angle right here is alternate interior with the angle over here. So that angle also has to be 15 degrees. Once we know that, we can find the third angle in the upper triangle by doing 180 minus 153 minus 15. Remember, that's because the three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So when we do 180 minus 153 minus 15, we get 12. So that means that this third angle has to be 12 degrees. Now that angle, the 12, is alternate interior with this angle over here. So that angle will also have to be 12 degrees. Now we have a situation where we can use the third angle theorem. We have two pairs of angles between the two triangles that are congruent. We have a 15 and a 15, and a 12 and a 12. So that means that the third pair of angles will also have to be congruent. So this missing angle D has to be 153 degrees because it must be congruent to angle B.